In this lesson, we're going to be introducing the compound angular identities in trigonometry, which involve determining uh, the trigonometric lines of the sum and difference of two angles. Uh, for example, as you can see here, uh, the identities involve uh, determining a sine of a plus or minus b, cosine a of plus or minus b, and tan a of plus or minus b. Now, um, we're going to uh, prove these identities in another lesson. However, in this lesson, we're going to be uh, introducing these identities and uh, apply them through a set of a couple of examples. Now, if uh, before we get to the examples and how we could potentially use these identities, we're going to uh, start with um, introducing them. Now, over here, let's just start with the compound angle identities of cosine. Now, if I were to be adding and uh, subtracting uh, two angles inside cosine, now, as you can see that the compound angle identities involve uh, the terms consisting of cosine A, cosine B, sine A, sine B in both identities would actually differ between the two identities is actually the sine. So over here, if for both identities, we do have the sum or difference of cosine A, cosine B, sine A, sine B. Now these are the terms that you can actually find in the compound angle identities of cosine, whether I'm adding or subtracting A uh, and B. Now, if I were to be adding A and B inside cosine, if I were to be finding cosine of A plus B, then these two terms here, cosine A, cosine B, sine A, sine B, would actually be uh, uh, would actually be separated by negative, the opposite uh, sign. So, cosine A plus B is in fact cosine A cosine B minus sine A uh, sine B. However, if I were to be subtracting A and B inside cosine, if I were to be looking for cosine of A minus B, in that case, I would add these two terms. This is how the identity works. And as I've already mentioned, we're going to prove these in uh, another lesson. Um, however, uh, regarding the compound angle identities of sine. Now, over here, uh, as you can see, if I were to be having A minus B or A plus B inside sine, we're going to add the signs later. So in that case, the two terms uh, involved in the compound angle identities of sine are in fact sine A and then cosine B, so it's sine of the first angle, cosine of the second. And then we do switch the angles. So now it becomes cosine of the first, sine of the second. So it's cosine A, sine B. However, regarding the signs, if I were to be adding A and B inside sine, so if sine A plus B, in that case, I would add uh, these uh, two terms. As you can see, regarding the compound angle identities of uh, sine, these two terms would actually keep the same sign between A and B inside uh, sine. So consequently, if I were to be subtracting A and B inside sine, so if I were to be finding sine of A minus B, in that case, I would subtract these two terms. The compound angle identity would be sine A cosine B minus cosine A uh, sine B. Now, these are regarding the compound angle identities of uh, sine and cosine. However, if I were to be uh, looking at the compound angle identities of tan, similarly, if I were to uh, add and subtract a and b inside tan as a plus b or a minus b. Now, the two terms in volt here, now the terms in volt here in the compound angle identity would actually be tan a, tan b at the numerator. And then we divide by the summary difference of the two terms that are 1 and then the product of tan A, tan B. However, now we're going to distribute the signs according to the sign separated, separating A and B inside tan. So the terms at the numerator are in fact tan A, tan B, and at the denominator they're 1, and then the product of tan A, tan B. 
Now, if I were to be uh, adding A and B inside TAN, in that case, TAN A and TAN B would actually be added at the numerator, so the numerator has the same sign here uh, as the one separating A and B inside TAN. Well, the denominator, it's 1 minus TAN A, TAN B, that uh, we, uh, in fact, work with the opposite operation or the opposite sign. However, if I were to be subtracting A and B inside TAN, so if I were to be looking at TAN of A minus B, then at the numerator, it would be the difference of TAN A and tan B as tan A minus tan B, and at the denominator, I would add 1 and tan A, tan B. Now, this is how, in fact, the compound angle identities uh, work, as I've already mentioned, we're going to prove them in another lesson. Now, we're going to move forward to applying them in uh, a couple of examples. So if I were to look at this example, we need to show that cosine of pi over 12 is equals to square root of 3 plus 1 over 2 square root of 2. Over here, of course, uh, given that you cannot uh, use your calculator for this question. Now, uh, in a previous lesson, we have introduced the remarkable angles and their trigonometric lines, which you are responsible for knowing that, given that you could be sitting on papers without a calculator, so you need to know the trigonometric lines of remarkable angles without having to refer to a calculator. So over here, in order to determine the exact value of cosine of pi over 12, I need to uh, look for the sum or difference of two remarkable angles that add up to pi over 12. Now, if I were to recall, our remarkable angles are in fact uh, 0, pi over 6, pi over uh, 4, pi over 3, pi over 2, uh, then we have the pi, then 3 pi over 2, and then uh, 2 pi. So if we get to find the sum or difference of uh, two remarkable angles that give me pi over 12, in that case I could find the exact value of cosine pi over 12 using the compound angle uh, identity. Now you'd notice that if uh, I were to subtract pi over 4 and pi over 3, so as you can see pi over 3 minus pi over 4 common denominator is 12, then 4 minus 3, that's a 1, is in fact pi over 12. So over here, cosine of pi over 12, we can look at it as cosine of pi over 3 minus pi over 4. And now we can apply the compound angle identity of cosine a minus b. Now we know that cosine of a minus b is in fact cosine a cosine b plus sine a uh, sine b. So over here it's cosine of pi over 3 cosine of pi over 4 since that's a negative for cosine the compound angle identity is reversed operation so it becomes a plus and then sine of pi over 3 sine of pi over 4. Now, referring back to the table of remarkable angles that uh, we've built in a previous lesson, over here you could, uh, in fact, find uh, the exact or give the exact value of the trigonometric lines of pi over 3 and pi over 4 and then simplify them into the form given here. Now, we know that cosine of pi over 3 is a half and cosine of pi over 4 is 1 over square root of 2 plus and sine of pi over 3 is square root 3 over 2, and sine of pi over 4 is also 1 over square root of 2. So that leaves me with 1 over 2 square root of 2 plus square root of 3 over 2 square root of 2, which you've noticed they have the same denominator, so I just add uh, the numerators here and end up with the expression uh, they asked for. In this next example, we're going to uh, be proving 
uh, this identity. They're asking us to show this identity that consists of the product of cosine a plus b and cosine a minus b on the left hand side. And we're asked to prove this product equals to cosine squared a minus uh, sine squared b. So over here, uh, whenever we need to prove an identity, or two quantities equal, it's, uh, we need to actually start from the left-hand side and reach the right-hand side, or start with the right-hand side and reach the left-hand side, or start with each of the two sides separately and prove them equal to the same quantity. If A is equals to C and B is equals to C, then A and B are equal. So over here, uh, since there's nothing much we can do with the right hand side. What we could do here is start with the left hand side. Starting with the left hand side, we have cosine of a plus b times cosine of a minus b. So starting with the left hand side, there's nothing much we can do here except apply the compound angle identities. So cosine of a plus b is in fact cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b. And then cosine of a minus b is cosine a cosine b plus sine a sine b. So looking at uh, this, the product, this product of these two factors, you notice they're in fact in the form uh, x minus y into x plus y, which we already know this identity, the difference of two squares. So x minus y into x plus y is in fact expanded into x squared minus uh, y squared. So over here I would have cosine squared a cosine squared b minus sine squared a sine squared b. So I have not reached uh, the right hand side they're asking for yet. However, by comparing them, we always look at what we already have and what we need to prove. So I need to reach cosine squared a and sine squared b. So by looking here, I already have a cosine squared here and I already have a sine squared, uh, sorry, a sine squared b here. So what I need to do is get rid of cosine squared b and sine squared of a. However, we do have the compound, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Pythagorean identity that does relate cosine squared to sine squared. So we do know that uh, sine squared x plus cosine squared x is in fact equals to 1. Now why is that useful? Because since I already uh, want the identity on the right hand side in terms of sine squared only, to get rid of cosine squared b, what I could do is replace cosine squared b by 1 minus sine squared b. So over here, cosine squared a, that's into 1 minus sine squared b minus, I need to keep sine squared b here, but again, replace sine squared a in terms of 1 minus uh, cosine squared a. So now expanding these products, I have cosine squared a minus cosine squared a sine squared b, then minus sine squared b plus sine squared b cosine squared of a. So looking at the terms we ended up with, you've noticed that these in fact uh, cancel out and I'm only left with cosine squared a minus sine squared b, which is what was required to prove. Now, in this last example, we're, uh, we're looking here at a different type of exercise where we're in fact given sine theta and sine phi, where theta and phi are both acute angles. And we need to find the exact value of cosine theta minus phi. So since this is in the form cosine a minus b, I'd immediately think of the compound angle identity. So over here, cosine of theta minus phi is in fact equals to cosine theta 
cosine phi since this is a compound angle identity of cosine and this is a difference then this becomes a plus sine theta sine phi now as you can see we already have the two sine uh, terms we have sine theta sine phi but in order to determine cosine of theta minus phi i still need to find cosine theta and cosine phi what we could do is find a uh, cosines of theta and phi using the Pythagorean identity and sine theta and sine phi. So over here, we already know that cosine squared theta is 1 minus sine squared theta. So that is 1 minus 9 out of 25, which is 16 out of 25. So which leaves me with cosine of theta equals to 4 over 5 or negative. 4 over 5. However, I do know that theta is acute. So being an acute angle that's in quadrant 1, and in quadrant 1, cosine is positive. So over here, the negative value of cosine is rejected. So cosine theta is, in fact, 4 out of 5. Similarly, sine squared of uh, I'm sorry, I'm looking for cosine squared of phi here. So cosine squared phi is in fact 1 minus sine squared of phi, which is equal to uh, 1 minus 144 over 169, which is 25 over 169. So which leaves me with cosine phi to be 5 out of 13. Now, cosine phi here again is uh, positive since phi is also an acute angle and it's inside uh, quadrant 1. So now that I have sine theta, cosine theta, sine phi, cosine phi, I could replace in the compound angle identity of cosine theta minus phi in order to determine its exact value. So cosine of theta minus phi, that's in fact cosine theta, cosine phi. So it's the product of the two cosines. So it's 4 out of 5 times 5 out of 13. Then plus the product of the two sines, it's 3 out of 5 times 12 out of uh, 13. Even though here I could cancel out the 5, but I will not do so since uh, I already need uh, the same denominator in order to add the numerators. So over here, uh, 5 times 13 is in fact 65. So that is 20 out of 65 plus, uh, no, that's a 36 out of 65. So adding these, that would in fact give me 56 out of 65 for cosine theta minus phi. And that is the exact value. I remind you that when they ask for the exact value, they're in fact looking for uh, the answer as a, a fraction in simplest form or as a square root in simplest form, uh, etc., not in decimal form. So this is the exact value of cosine theta minus phi. So uh, now in this session, we have seen how we could apply the compound angle identities in some examples and some exercises. However, in another lesson, we're going to uh, prove these identities and we're going to also uh, tackle the double angle identities of sine, cosine, and tan in addition to uh, their proofs.